Hello. So if you know that electric cars can be quite expensive to buy brand new these days. They are. But the good news is there's lots of really reasonable priced second-hand cars on the market today, such as these three. They're all three years old. Today I'm going to be in the Nissan Leaf. Ta-da! The BMW i3 for you. Well, who's going to be driving the third one then? Well, we've got Ped today. He's going to be helping us out in the Renault Zoe. <laughs> you mean petrol Ped? I couldn't really call him EV Ped or Electro Ped. Yeah, Ped. He Lecky knows... Peddy. Lecky Peddy. <laughs> Does he know anything about electric cars? He knows cars, quite a bit about electric cars. He's going to do us proud today. Don't All you right. worry about that. But before we managed to use a single watt of electricity, Tip was already getting all scientific. All right, boys, before we set off, just a little bit of science today. You know, there's all this worry about batteries degrading in second-hand cars, which you say is a bit of a myth. So we're all full up. You've got 100% everybody hoping. Mine says I've got 99 miles to go. Paul? I've got 100% and I've got 112 miles to go. And I'm on 100% and I've got 90 miles. All close, all about 100. OK, so now we have, um, got to have it's got to be a proper scientific test, Paul. So temperature 21, 2021. 20, Fan only one up, right? And that's all. So we all drive exactly the same and we'll do a nice little convoy, speed limits, normal driving, and, and then we can test whether there's any battery degradation. He's having a laugh. Fan on one. What's all that about? After you, Ped. Lecky Peddy, I reckon that's going to stick, you know. <laughs> I do need to change the channel name, really. <laughs> Am I allowed to use windscreen wipers, or will that damage the range too much? I think we'll all have our wipers on. It is after all raining. Wipers on? I've got the whole lot on. I've got my heated front windscreen on, my heated seats on. Yep, I'm afraid I wasn't taking Tiff's test very seriously, which we'll get on to later. Now, though, it was time to hit the road. Now, this i3 I'm in today is the range extender version, which they've actually discontinued at BMW. They brought these i3s in about six and a bit years ago. They've actually sold something like 19,000 of them, of which just over half have been this range extender version. But it's only got a little 33 kilowatt hour battery in it. So it's only got that range of around 100 miles. The new i3s, no range extender, have got a, a bigger battery. They've got now 200 miles range on battery alone. So they decided it doesn't need the range extender version anymore, which I'm a bit sad about because for some of us petrol heads, it's that range thing that still worries you. You know, it depends on your lifestyle. If you're only going to do 20 miles a day backwards and forwards to work, then brilliant. I'd have an electric car every day myself. But when you're here, there and everywhere, range still worries you. But anyway, that's another thing. So I'm in the Nissan Leaf, the first generation Nissan Leaf, albeit this one has a 30 kilowatt battery. And there's a very simple reason why I chose this car. Because despite its pretty unremarkable looks, the Leaf is arguably the most pioneering car since, well, since the Ford Model T. The Leaf was the first affordable, mass-produced EV. In fact, since 2010, they've sold almost 500,000 of these things all over the world, making it the best-selling electric car in history. So in other words, the Leaf did for electric cars what the Ford Model T did for combustion engines over a century ago, making it an everyday car for everyday people. So I've bought along a Renault Zoe. Now, these might not have sold in the numbers of Paul's Nissan Leaf, but there's a very good reason for me bringing this car today because I reckon pound for pound, this is probably one of the best value used EVs you can buy. Unless you consider a Renault Twizy, but I really wouldn't want a daily one of those. So these little Renault Zoes were just under £19,000 new, but that included a £5,000 government subsidy. And this used one that I'm sat in is just a smidge over £8,000. So it's had a huge whack of depreciation. But that's the kind of argument now. It's kind of had that, and for £8,000, it's a really interesting proposition. This three-year-old car, just over three years, three years and three months, has done 65,000 miles. And it absolutely looks like new inside. So very impressed with the, the quality of a, a car that's done so many miles. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not the range promised is dropping. Because one of the, a lot of people say, myths about second-hand cars, that these batteries don't give the range promised when they were new. So as this has done 65,000 miles, 
It's going to be interesting to see how much it drops off. I'm misting up a bit now. I'm not allowed to turn my fan up. Just plug my phone in as well. The phone's plugged in, heated seats are on, heaters up more. Tiff wants to try and get scientific and worry about what range we're going to get. But the reality is I want to use this as a normal car because the chances are, if you own one of these cars, you're going to charge it up every night and you're going to do a similar sort of journey every day. It's not really a car that you're going to take on a long journey. So it's all a bit irrelevant what Tiff wants. I want to use this car in everyday driving, not to get a specific mileage if I restrict my heating in the car or don't have the radio on. That's not what it's about. You have to say it's a lovely interior to this i3. I've got a nice big sat nav screen in the middle, nice little square, well, rectangular dashboard through the steering wheel. It's a nice place to be. I can't do much except worry about my range. <laughs> but you wouldn't worry about it. If you know what you're doing each day, it's fine. If you live somewhere where you can plug in overnight, it's just when you want to go for that long trip one weekend, the bank holiday, you want to head to Scotland. And then you've got a lot of planning to do, a lot of fingers crossed that the charging points aren't all taken when you get there. I bet Lecky Peddy's got all this sort of stuff sorted out. He wouldn't be worried about range. Now, interestingly, my range has dropped quite a lot. I'm driving a normal flow of traffic. I'm not doing anything spectacular. I'm down to 50 miles of range already. Look at that dirty petrol station on the left, guys. <laughs> It'll never catch on. I mean, who'd have petrol in their name? <laughs> My range is currently showing 57 miles. Now, interestingly, it dropped really heavily from when we first got in. It went from 90 to 50, but now it's kind of normalised around about 50, and it's going back up again to 58. Well, funny you should say that mine's actually gone up one mile. I'm up for 100 miles and I started with 99. <laughs> maybe if you keep going, maybe you could be the first person ever to generate electricity from nothing. What do they say? Energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but transformed from one form to another. Look, this is love cars. This is not, you know, modern science. This program, please, could you moderate your language to a more understandable level? All right, if you break, it puts stuff back into your battery and makes you go further. You've found our level. You've found our level. That's perfect. Now, we should just explain that we later found out that Zoe was in need of a software update from Renault. Apparently, that would have fixed the big drop in predicted range that Ped experienced. Worth knowing for any Zoe owners out there. I feel quite nice on my i3 up front. It's very airy. You two look a bit sort of nondescript following me. The Zoe is not a bad looking car following it, but I think if we're going to talk about looks, I'd like to sort of skip over it quite quickly because this isn't really known for its looks. It's those boggy headlights. How about your info? I've got a very nice dashboard layout. It's a very smart little car. This, did you just got, I've got a nice digital speedo, my battery power, not much else. You've got any sort of jazzy stuff in that Renault there, Ben? The only jazz, the, the dash is a bit basic. The jazziest thing is on the headline, you've got this really cool kind of circuit board motif and you've got it on the dash as well, but it's not nearly as nice as the inside of your BMW, Tiff. Well, I'll have you know that the inside of this Leaf is actually quite futuristic. There's Ooh. lots going on, all digital, bit of a head-up display, sort of built in, but uh, yeah, it's quite nice. Took this way, it looks a lot better inside than it does outside, but looks-wise, i3 for me, I think that's a good-looking car. Yeah, challenging looks, but funky. I'll tell you what, driving this BMW, I've noticed this regen. When I lift off, it, it really starts to slow down, regenerating. I don't know whether the brake lights come on, because it suddenly slows. So I think, I'll tell you what, Ben, if you follow me, we'll both be doing a legal 50 miles an hour, coming to this downhill stretch, and I'll lift off. I'll tell you what I'm going to do it, close that behind me, and then you do the same. Ready, steady, lift off. Your lights are on, but I'm going to have to put my foot on the brakes. <laughs> Your regen, if that was just regen, that's so much stronger than mine. I oh, know you're nearly in the back of me there. Paul, do it quickly, Paul. You both ready, steady, you two. Ready, steady, lift off, you two. I'm just, I'm just regen that it looks like we're pretty much the same. Yeah, I think that, you know, this is better than the, the Zoe, but it's, and I'm in the more aggressive mode, but uh, the i3, even the brake lights come on the i3, which they don't do with the Zoe, so that's definitely one for driving there.
This car's got a 30 kilowatt battery and it's got an 80 kilowatt motor, which equates to about 110 horsepower, giving it a 0 to 62 time in 11.5 seconds and a mouth-watering top speed of 89 miles an hour. But let's be frank, in the UK, you should never be exceeding 70 miles an hour anyway, so it shouldn't even come into play. It's very, very smooth to drive. It's Obviously, it's very quiet, so you're not going to wake the neighbours up at three o'clock in the morning if you get in from a heavy night out. Now, I've got a 22 kilowatt battery pack in this car. So if you think about plugging it into, well, even a normal three pin charger at home, which charges just over two kilowatts, that's not too bad to get a full charge. But let's face it, if you had an electric car, you'd probably have a seven kilowatt charger fitted at home. And seven kilowatts is going to give you a full charge in what, four to five hours, which that's certainly an overnight. Come home, plug the car in, wake up in the morning, full battery charge. It's certainly a small car, but it's, it's pretty practical in here. I'm a big guy. There's loads of room in the front. There's plenty of space for two adults in the back. And interestingly, the boot space is only just a little bit smaller than the Nissan Leaf, which is a, a much bigger car. And it's much bigger than TIFF's i3. And of course, I'm sitting in something like a racing car. It's got this carbon fiber monocoque construction, which gives great strength. But also, they've got this recycled materials they've used in building the interior, which looks a bit weird, but, well, a bit woke, really. Gosh, I've just used the word woke. Look at that one, just went past, look, get an i3. Did you give a wave? Us I, we're not tacky like that, us I3 people. We don't do waving to each other. We just smile smugly at each other. This is the smug smile. I'm electric. I'm electric, you know. Look, no emissions, no emissions, me. Hello, no, no emissions. Yes, I know they had to take the batteries from South America. Yes, all right, there's a bit of emissions building the thing in the first place. I could get used to this, you know. It's a really smooth, pleasant way to get around. I think it might be the future. Much like a battery, these three EVs had their positives and their negatives. And with each of them suitably explored, we headed back to talk them through. That was a rather nice little drive in the countryside, wasn't it? Oh, it was very that. clean very and pleasant. green. But first up, the answer to our range test. Just oh, that scientific test check. Yeah. Well, it's scientific. important to do these things. <laughs> Come on, Is then. it a myth that batteries degrade? Well, my BMW that's done 65,000 miles wow. Started off promising 99 miles, we went 19 miles, and I only lost eight miles of range. <laughs> How does I, that work? I grew electricity. <laughs> Regenerative so, braking. My it's, batteries certainly haven't degraded in three years and 65 miles. You know what, that's miles. absolutely brilliant. Much stronger regenerative braking in that. Yeah. And the little redder? Well, uh, the, uh, mine was £10,000 cheaper than yours. What was your range promise? Uh, and 90. it needs a software update. Software update? Is yeah. that like an oil change yeah, for yeah. lucky people? Um, because I used 40 miles. <laughs> 40 but miles on that, 19. That literally went from 90 miles to 50 miles in the first two miles, and then it kind of stayed at sort of 50 so, to 60 miles. If you set off on a 60 mile jolly, you'd be getting worried. Uh, but you, you know, the important thing to remember is it does need a software update. It does so. need a software update. Which is uh, I'm deflecting all... one for you there, Peg. Cheers, I'm, mate. Yeah, so, I'm coming so, over right, to. Let's move on to the Nissan. Put us out of our misery, come on. How many miles did you use up? Well, I've got 88 miles left, which means, means I used you, 24 miles. 20. Well, that's still not good. 19 miles, you used 24. But there's a little secret. Because unlike you, fan number one, 21 degrees, I had my heating on full, charging my phone, you electric <laughs> heated seats on. That it was, was so a scientific test. No, it wasn't. It's a real world test. Real the, world. The, the test today, Tiff, is all about would you buy a second-hand EV? And that's the test. For me, Ped, what would you? I, I, I think, yeah. I mean, if you live in a city, your average journey is probably 20, 30 miles, so range really. If you live in a city and you've got somewhere to plug it in. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Kind of true. Multi-storey high rise. How are you going to plug it into a high rise? Infrastructure is challenging at the moment. It, it is. Uh, but, or if you have a second car. And if you have a second car, because and these And the drive are... to put two cars on. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you'll have your massive big long drive outside your mansion. Oh, obviously. Right, you know. <laughs> but you're right. Um, but for, for me personally, I, I agree with you there. Same sort of route. Second car, absolutely no question. First car, a bit challenging they, they, for me. They make a great second car, but the, the challenge of buying a new one is they're quite expensive. But these are all reasonably, you know, 8,000 quid. That's not reasonably. It's Come on, still... then. Are you converted as, as <laughs> our head and I lecky pen and myself? Yeah, I appreciate this is the way we're going. Maybe hydrogen will come in in 10, 15 years' time. We don't know for full. It's still too expensive. Like the new cars are very expensive. Unfortunately for me, compared to that, the Leaf, 
I could get a same age, same mileage, focus, one litre for £3,000 less. But it's the running cost, it's everything and for three thousand pounds, You can do your sums as much as you want. I've no got three grand charge, in no my back servicing, pocket. No three road grand tax. in my back pocket. I'd still buy the little Ford. I can go to the south we of France. We need to spend more time on this. Because we're not going to convince oh, you that. We've got off. two against one. Oh, two against one. Let's two against one. Let's